بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome dear students in our lesson Today inshallah we will continue the expansion unit We started the expansion units 4 to 6 uh, last class Today inshallah we will cover lesson 2 the reading Okay um, Inshallah by the end of our lesson you will be able to Read about adventure trips Scan the reading for details And also answer questions related to the text okay we will have some questions and we will answer it based on the text we will discuss the topic together inshallah okay before we start um i gave you homework page 129 and 130 okay the first um exercise complete the sentences <coughs> use expressions of quantity he wants you to use the expressions of uh, quantity like can you give me examples of expressions of quantity a little, a few, many, excellent, much. These are examples of expressions of uh, quantity. If you haven't done the homework, I'm sure you did. Pause the video, try to answer the questions from 129 to 130, and let's see the answers together. Okay, for number one, I'm on a diet, so I only eat a little ice cream. Not only a little we can use. Ice cream, it's uncountable. Now, we can use we can use um, other expressions of quantity that can work with the uncountable nouns. This is not the only un uh, word we can use. Okay. Number two, I don't use much salt. Salt also uncountable. I really don't like it. Three. Did you get enough pineapple? Pineapple is countable or uncountable? Countable, excellent. If you want more, I have another one in the refrigerator. Four, I only eat a few eggs. Eggs is countable. We can use expressions that work with the countable nouns each week. Number five, how many? Because papayas are countable. Number six, wow, that's hot. Um, did you put a lot of pepper in the soup? So, um, pepper is countable or uncountable? Uncountable noun. Excellent. Seven, uh, we uh, use how much because butter is uncountable noun. Eight, the last one, I don't like this restaurant's menu. There aren't many appetizers on it, okay? Now, let's see exercise B. Complete the conversation. We have a conversation. You have to use something, anything, or nothing, okay? Uh, let's uh, see the answers together. So, for number one, we put something. Number two, anything. Number three, we put nothing. Number four, anything. Five, something, okay? These are the answers for your homework. You already uh, did the homework. You can discuss the answers with your friends. Uh, now we have uh, an exercise C, write a recipe. Do you remember when we wrote recipes in our uh, lessons before? Put the expressions from the list in a correct order. Use the sequence words in your sentences. So we have these steps. We have to write down the recipe. We have to use the expressions. Um, like what? Uh, sequence words, like what? Can you give me examples? We can say first, second, third, uh, finally, after that, then. These are these words we can use it to write down the recipe in a paragraph, okay? Uh, let's uh, see the answer. First, crack four eggs into a bowl, then stir the eggs uh, for one minute. After that, pour the eggs into... A uh, frying pan, finally, cook the eggs for three minutes. Okay, so we wrote down the steps and we used the sequence words here, okay? Exercise D, use each group of words to write two sentences. Use the present, perfect, uh, for one sentence, and the other sentence you have to use the simple past. So you will write two sentences. One with the present perfect and the other one with simple past. This is the example. We have Bedriya visit the museum last year. Bedriya has visited. We use the verb in um, 
uh, has have or uh, verb three also with it to form the present perfect the museum and then we uh, use the verb in the past tense and we included last year with the present perfect we didn't include it because usually we don't we use uh, the expressions like for and since with the present perfect we don't uh, mention the exact time uh, in the past like the past tense okay we have this example Tariq and Saeed eat at the Indian restaurant uh, last Thursday night. So you have to form two sentences. Let's see it together. The first one, Tariq and Saeed have eaten at the Indian restaurant. Tariq and Saeed ate. This is the past tense. And then we mentioned Thursday, last Thursday night. Okay? Number two, um, if you haven't uh, done um, you can read these uh, examples to your friend. You can compare your sentences. You can discuss why. And we will just read the examples. Uh, two, we have gone uh, sightseeing in Egypt. We went sightseeing in Egypt during our vacation in 2009. Number three, Ali hasn't taken uh, chemistry with Mr. Faris. Ali didn't take chemistry with uh, Mr. Faris this past year. Okay, um, now for exercise E, write two sentences, also you will write two sentences, okay, for each situation. So we have a situ every situation, you will write a sentence for it. Use uh, the present perfect plus sense in four. So we will use two sentences, one sentence using sense and the other sentence we will use it with four, okay? All, both sentences, we will use the present perfect, okay? So we have Sultan started to exercise on September 5th. Today is December 5th. This is the situation. Like what is the sentences he gave us? He has exercised since September. He has exercised for three months. So we, we used sense and we used for, okay? Uh, for number one, let's see the... Answer, he has driven this new car since Monday. He has driven uh, his new car for five days, okay? We used it once with since and the other one with for. Number two, we have Noura and Amal. They have studied French since seventh grade or for three years. Number three, we have lived in our house since I was three years old or for 13 years. You can use it with since and for um, like this. Now for exercise F, write questions. Here we have to form questions using how long. Okay, we will ask about the duration. We have you play video games. How long have you played video games? Okay, this is how we form the question. This is an example, you have it on your book. We have these, let's see the answers together. For number one, how long have they lived in Jeddah? And number two, how long has she been on the phone? How long has Qasim worked at the hotel? Uh, and for how long has Khalid spoken Japanese? Um, now let's move on, we finished the exercises. صح? We did the homework together. Now we will move on to our lesson. Okay? Before we start our lesson, as our lesson, we will, I will ask you this question you can see in front of you here. Why do we write? People, when they write, can you tell me why do they write? Why do they um, write paragraphs or letters or text? For what? Why do we usually write? For homework, this is one reason, to give advice, excellent, to uh, persuade other people of your opinion. So these are examples. We use it to persuade the reader, to convince the reader, to tell them our opinion and they will understand. This is one reason we write. And also to give the reader information. If he asks for information, we give them information like the ones we did in our previous lesson. We um, 
wrote brochures. Do you remember the brochures we wrote together? It has a lot of information. Do you remember the projects we did together? We provide for the reader. When they read it, there is a lot of information they can gain. صح? This is another reason. To ask the reader to do something, if we want something from uh, another person, like uh, if you want to convince your mother or father to buy something for you or to allow you to do something, you write a letter to them or you can text them to uh, ask them for something. To give directions, sometimes we write to give directions. We tell them turn right, turn left. And in our homework before, we wrote to uh, the, the, do you remember the sequence words? We wrote a recipe to, uh, it's, it's similar to directions, to give the steps to do something, صح? We write for many reasons. Every one of us, they write for their own reason. If we look at page 70, can you open your books, page 70? Yes, look at the pictures in front of us. And we have this title, Adventure Trips. When you look at the, don't read anything, just look at the pictures and look at the title. What do you think, why, what is the, why did the re writer wrote this paragraph? What do you think it has in it? Look at the title, adventure trips. What do they give? Do they give us advices? Maybe, we don't know. Maybe there is some advice for adventure trips and maybe there is some information. They give us information, صح? So we write for many reasons. We guess maybe it's for information. Maybe they give you direction to go somewhere. We will see. We will, may, we will know why um, the writer wrote this text when we read it together, OK? Before we um, read, discuss the pros and cons of the following adventure sports. So we have three adventures each one of them in a paragraph, and he wants you to look at the pros and cons. What does pros and cons mean? The good side of the sport and the negative side, the bad side of this sport. And we have the three, skydiving. And you can see the picture, what does skydiving mean? What do you think the good things in skydiving? Why do people enjoy uh, this sport? Because the adrenaline rush, maybe, this is one reason. What do you think the downside, the negative side? Maybe people get scared. Maybe the parachute will, no, will not uh, open. We don't know, صح? There are some good and bad things in everything, صح? Biking, do you ha do you, can you tell me some of the good things and the bad things uh, in biking? Riding a bike, biking across the country. Uh, biking in a long distance away from people. Do you think there are some good things? Yes, there are. Uh, good for your health. Uh, most, uh, mostly it's uh, based on your health. It's very good for your health to test your patience, to, to test your limits, صح? And what about the negative things? Can you think about something negative? Maybe something, if you are riding alone, maybe uh, biking alone, maybe something will happen to you and no one around to help you. This is maybe one of the negative things. White water rafting, maybe some people will get injured the, uh, during this extreme sport. It's very uh, dangerous. You have to be um, really trained to do these exercises, to the, these ac activities and adventures, okay? Now look, let's look at um, every paragraph one by one, okay, and we will hear it together and then we will answer questions. I will give you questions um, and you will answer it based on the text in front of you. Let's hear it together, the first one. Skydiving, flying high in the Rockies, USA. Have you ever dreamed of flying? We can offer you a unique opportunity. SKYHI is top ranked and is the largest and most reliable skydiving facility in Colorado. Every year, people take more than 35,000 jumps at our facility. Conquer your fear and get an awesome view of the snowy peaks from about 3,000 feet, 900 meters, above the Rockies. For those of you who want to relive your greatest adventure over many years, 
our camera operator will accompany you and film your own personal jump video, or you can even carry your own camera. Location, 1 hour from Denver, Colorado. Information, www.skyhighdive.com Okay. Now, we already heard the text together. Here, I, I wrote four questions uh, for you to answer it based on the text. You can highlight the answers, okay? What is the name of the company? The question two, how do you know the company is popular? What information here you know they are popular? How high is the plane when uh, people jump? How high? They mentioned the number. What are the two ways you can get a video in your jump, of your jump, okay? So how do you film your experience? These questions, pause the video, discuss it with your uh, friends, and let's see the answers together. I highlight it here. For the first question, the name of the company is SKYHI. And how do you know it's uh, famous every year people take more than 3,000 jumps uh, at our facility that's why it's popular there are many people uh, doing these jumps how high the plane 900 meters or 3,000 feet um, what are the two ways you can get a video of your jump you can use your uh, camera uh, they have a camera operator to film it or you can use your own camera this is for the last question now let's see the other um, reading the second paragraph. Biking in the Alps, Germany. Pedaling through the Bavarian countryside is the way to go for many visitors. You can bike through green valleys and past rivers, including the Danube, while enjoying rural landscapes and experiencing life in German villages. The trail takes you over the Alps and crosses several mountain passes to Garmisch-Partenkirchen. The town is Germany's most famous winter sports center, close to Zugspitze, Germany's highest mountain. A mountain railway and cable car can take you to the peak. The trip along this scenic road is a real treat. Click here for details, www.pedalps.com. Okay, we read the text together, and we have these questions. Which part of... Germany does the bike trip go through which part from the reading you have to answer what famous river Will you see during the bike? They mentioned the name of the river. What is the um, the Garmisch uh, Peter Knish What is uh, this name? It's a name of something in Germany How can you get to the top of the mountain? These are questions you have to answer it based on the reading, okay? Yellow, let's see the answer. It's highlighted here for the first question. Uh, the Bavarian countryside, this is the, the trip will go through, uh, through that. The name of the river is, number two is the Danube. This is the name of the river. Uh, for question three, Germany's most famous winter sports center. This is the name of the sport center. And this name is for Germany's highest mountain, okay? The last question, railways and cable car. This is how you can go to the top of the mountain. Okay, now for the last paragraph, let's hear it together and then we will answer the questions um, we will see in the next slide. White water rafting, Chile. We invite you to come and explore the best kept secret of Patagonia, an amazing place where glacial lakes are connected by hundreds of kilometers of rivers. The Futalufu River offers 40 miles, 64 kilometers, of top whitewater rafting. Come and experience the turquoise colored rapids rushing through the Andean mountain range. This is the safest ride there is, even for beginners. We've been providing rafting trips for more than 30 years. For more information, click here, www.andesrafting.net. Okay. 
we read the text together and we will have we have these questions what is um, sorry what is uh, special what is special about white water rafting experience in uh, Patagonia how long is the trip uh, down the river can you go on this trip if you've ever uh, never done white water rafting before how do you know how long has the company been in business okay we will answer these questions based on the text read it and try to highlight the answers let's see it together so for the first uh, question an amazing place where um, glacial lakes are connected by hundreds of kilometers of rivers this is the uh, first question how long the trip uh, 64 kilometers uh, can you go on this trip if you never done if you don't have any experience yes even for beginners they mentioned it's uh, okay to do it if you are not an experienced person if you are a beginner how long the company been in business more than 30 years okay now which adventure from the three we read about? Which adventure you think you will do? Okay, which adventure would you like? The skydiving, white uh, water rafting. So it's based, the answer should be based on you, which one you like, okay? After reading, we have this exercise. After reading, fill in the information from the text. Not all the rows will be filled. خلاص, يعني we will not write everything, okay? What kind of adventure? We have three names here, and we will have their comments. Sometimes people write their comments. What do they think of the trips they did? صح? So we have these three people. They wrote their comments, okay? And we have uh, this table we have to fill in. What did Mitch hear? What did Mitch feel? What kind of adventure did he do? What did Mitch see? So we have to fill it based on the reading page 71 okay these are the readings so you have these comments this is Mitch Taylor you have the name here and you will read it and you fill out the table and we have Daniel Garcia and Neil uh, these are the three people you will read about pause the video read it take your time fill in the table and let's see the answers together so for Mitch, the kind of adventure, he did the skydiving um, over the Rockies. Okay, this is the adventure he did. Daniel, he did biking in the Alps. Uh, Neil, whitewater rafting in Chile. This is the kind of adventure they did. What did Mitch feel? He felt frightened. Daniel felt the breeze on his face, felt tired uh, going uphill. Um, Neil felt scared, felt bumps, spins, and snakes, uh, shakes, uh, felt the freezing water. These are the feelings he experienced in his adventure. For what did they hear? He heard the wind rushing by, heard the sounds of nature, the birds, the trees, the water in um, the streams. From where did I get these answers? Did I made it up? La, I wrote it based on the comments we read, okay? You have to read the comments so you can um, write down these answers. What did uh, Neil hear? He heard the sounds of the boat hitting the water. What did uh, Mitch see? So the ground uh, getting closer and closer, watched the beautiful landscape below. What did Daniel see? He saw uh, snow on the slope so green countryside that was full of wild uh, flowers but neil he didn't mention anything he saw okay for the smell what did they smell mitch didn't mention anything uh, anything only daniel he smelled the fresh uh, scents of the plants this is what um, these answers for uh, after reading question. We will have the th last part, the discussion question. What adventure trip do people take in your country? So you have to discuss with your friend. This is a speaking exercise. Halas, you heard the comments, you read the comments, you read the information from the brochures uh, related uh, to uh, the uh, adventures. And you heard the comments, you read the comments uh, of people who experienced these adventures. Now, 
you have to ask yourself this question. You have to discuss it with your friends. You can use similar vocabulary. Where people do sports, this question I wrote it down to help you to ask each other the question to form a conversation with each other. Where do, where people do the sports? Where do you think people in our country, where do they go? Do, where, how, um, where do they do these adventures? You can see it where? Can you tell me examples? Yes, there are many hiking trips you can take around Riyadh, in Abha, um, and also um, in Rabigh, there are some many places you can go hiking there around the mountains. How much it costs to do them, the hiking, the st skydiving? We have these adventures here in our country. How much do you think it costs? Do you think it costs a lot? Maybe around 200 to 400, it's reasonable price. Um, if they uh, know anybody who has done them. Do you know anyone who did these adventures? Uh, brother, sister, father, relative, friend. Did they experience any of these uh, activities? Did they go um, do these adventures? What the person said about the experience? What did they say? What is their comments? Their feedback? What did they tell you? Did they enjoy it? Did they feel scared? Um, how did they smell? What did they smell? They see similar to the table we did together. Okay, so uh, talk to each other. Try to answer these questions as a discussion. Okay, for your homework, I want you to do page 131. If we want to recall what we covered, we covered the reading. We answered questions related to the reading. And also, we discussed um, the adventure trips. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. And inshallah, I will see you next class.